Right, so today we have Jacques Distler tell us about some applications of nilpotent Higgsing. Take it away. All right. Thank you very much. So um, this is uh, uh, based on uh, a variety of papers, some written with my former students, some written with uh, uh, Mario Martoni, who's, who's now at, at King's. Um, I'll mostly focus on this paper written with my current student, Grant Elliott, and, and there's some uh, uh, related work in six dimensions with, uh, with Monica and Craig uh, that I may briefly mention as we go along. Um, but the, the subject for today is um, Higgs branch renormalization group flows. You, you, you start with some four dimensional N equals two super conformal field theory. You move out onto the Higgs branch, turning on the VEV for some uh, uh, scalar component of some B hat R multiplets. Um, and um, this induces a renormalization group flow. And uh, we'd like to um, uh, discuss what, if anything, we can say about the um, endpoint of that flow. Um, generically, of course, you just end up on some infrared free theory. Uh, which is dull, uh, but on some special strata along the Higgs branch, uh, you end up at some non-trivial infrared fixed point. And we'd like to say as much as we can about the nature of the theory uh, at that fixed point. A particularly nice uh, uh, um, set of, of um, such RG flows is what I'm going to call milpotent Higgsing. Um, it's maybe not the greatest name, but it's the, the one I've been using, so bear with me. Um, and the idea here is um, that um, the B hat one multiplet contains the conserved currents associated to the hypercalar isometries of the Higgs branch. And the lowest component of that multiplet is the moment map. And the idea is to turn on a VEV for the highest root moment map of some simple factor in the uh, um, uh, uh, group of isometries. Um, and uh, throughout the talk, I'll be labeling a sub with a subscript K the level of the associated current algebra because that's something that we will um, be keeping track of. Okay, so um, let me say some things about uh, uh, the such RG flows. Um, uh, uh, and what makes them an interesting class to, to, to study. Um, the first thing is actually the last entry on the slide, namely that in the um, formalism of the vertex operator algebra associated to the ultraviolet theory, um, this has a very nice realization as a kind of drinfeld sokolov reduction of the vertex operator algebra. And from that knowledge, um, you can actually deduce a, a lot of stuff about the properties of the infrared theory. Namely, so the infrared theory is the BRST cohomology of um, uh, the uh, ultraviolet uh, of the vertex operator. At the, ver the, the vertex operator algebra of the infrared theory is the BRST cohomology for some suitable BRST operator of the vertex operator algebra of the ultraviolet theory. And from that, we can actually say a lot. So that's um, what I want to say here. So first of all, that particular factor in the flavor symmetry group is removed from the flavor symmetry algebra. So you turn on that highest root moment map and you get rid of that entire simple factor. The second thing you can say is that the rest of the flavor symmetry algebra uh, including the levels, is preserved, although it could be infrared enhanced. You could get something bigger uh, in the infrared theory. There could be more B1 hat operators than there were um, in the ultraviolet theory. Um, but the ones that are there remain there throughout the uh, um, uh, uh, RG flow and um, uh, appear as um, uh, uh, generators of the hypercalar isometries of the infrared theory. The dimension of the Higgs branch decreases by the dual Coxeter number minus one of the uh, guy that you Higgs. 
And the Coulomb branch also changes. And this was the thing that really got me interested. It changes in some really very precise way. Namely, if K, the level uh, uh, over here is even, then the Coulomb branch, de the dimension of the Coulomb branch, the rank of the theory decreases by one, and it decreases by removing a generator with dimension K over two, where K again was this level. Uh, and if K is odd, um, then the dimension stays the same, but a generator of dimension of uh, scaling dimension K minus one is replaced by another generator of scaling dimension K minus one over two. Remember K is odd. Um, and um, uh, uh, roughly speaking, it's something like the square root of, of this guy. No, that it need not be precisely the case. Um, but in any case, you replace one generator with another, preserving the dimension of the Coulomb branch, but of course, changing the theory. And the vial anomaly coefficients, A and C, or these particularly useful linear combinations of A and C also change in some very well-defined ways. Uh, the effective number of vector multiplets decreases by um, K minus one. So let's warm up because it's early morning here and, and I'm still a little sleepy. Let's warm up with a simple example of what this looks like, uh, namely everyone's favorite um, uh, 4D n equals to super conformal field theory, uh, the um, uh, rank n Minahan and Mishansky theory for E6, E7, or E8 is everyone's favorite theory because the Higgs branch is some well-known uh, uh, hyperkähler space, namely the n instanton moduli space for uh, gauge group E6, E7, or E8. And its dimension is of course, n times the dual coxeter number minus one. The Coulomb branch is n also is n dimensional, and it has generators uh, with dimensions a, two a, etc., on up to n times a, where a is this number, the dual coxeter number plus six divided by six, or three, four, or six for e six, e seven, or e eight. Um, the flavor symmetry, uh, the, the, the Higgs branch isometries, again, are, are very well known for, for the one instant on moduli space. It's just a, a copy of that Lie algebra at level 2a. And for, the, for n greater than one, it's uh, the same uh, uh, Lie algebra at, at level 2a times n, uh, direct sum a copy of SU2 at some level, which personally I could never remember what that level is, uh, but in fact, by the end of this slide, you'll understand what that number is, hopefully in some new and insightful way. Um, so let's think about what happens if I did a nilpotent Higgsing of this E6 or E7 or E8 um, Lie algebra. Turn on the highest root moment map uh, uh, for this symmetry. Um, if n is one, the infrared limit is just the empty theory. And remember, we decrease the Coulomb branch dimension by one. It started at one, so it ends up at zero. We remove the one generator that we had, namely the guy at, at, um, at uh, uh, dimension A. Uh, so there's nothing left for uh, the Coulomb branch. The Higgs branch had dimension dual Coxeter number minus one, we decrease the Higgs branch dimension by precisely that number. So again, the Higgs branch is zero dimensional and we just end up with the trivial uh, 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 theory in the infrared. For n greater than one, um, as it turns out, what you get is the rank n minus one minahan nemeshansky theory, namely the whose Higgs branch is the n minus one instanton moduli space. Direct sum a free hypermultiplet, which transformed in the uh, uh, half, F, well, there's a half hypermultiplet in the defining representation of this SU2. Um, we got rid of the Coulomb, the Coulomb branch generator of highest dimension. So we have generators with dimensions A on up to N minus one times A, exactly as you'd expect. Uh, uh, for this theory. 
the Higgs branch dimension, uh, again, we start with n times the dual Coxeter number minus one, and we subtract the dual Coxeter number minus one. So that's the Higgs branch, that's the n minus one instanton moduli space plus one, which is our free hypermultiplet. And now that maybe the only uh, really interesting computation is what happened to the SU2. Well, the SU2 had a free hypermultiplet in the half hypermultiplet in the, in the doublet. So, um, uh, uh, so that contributes to the level. If you remove that contribution, that decreases the level by one. And then what happens in the infrared is that the SU2 at that level is enhanced to uh, SU2 cross SU2. And then one of those factors is further enhanced to E6, E7, or E8 at the same level. And the other guy is SU2 at precisely the level um, uh, appropriate to the n minus one instanton moduli space. So um, that, as it were, is the mnemonic if you were stuck on a desert island for, for remembering what the level of this SU2 is, it's precisely the one that makes this Higgsing compatible with the symmetries, both of the ultraviolet and the infrared theory. Okay, so um, that's, that was a, a nice little warm up example just to see how things work. Um, what, what I really want to do is focus on, on uh, uh, theories in class S. And what I'm going to do is take, um, uh, specialize slightly and, and take the case where F, the, the thing I'm going to turn on the highest root moment map for, uh, is some simple factor of the manifest flavor symmetry of the theory. In other words, it's some subalgebra of the flavor symmetry for one of the punctures. These are labeled by nilpotent orbits. Um, and so there's some flavor symmetry, the commutant of the SU2 inside of G. Um, and um, we're gonna pick one simple factor there and turn on a high speed moment map for that. And I, the first thing I want to claim is that the flow uh, that is induced by that is um, between two super conformal field theories obtained by, by replacing the puncture O, the guy uh, 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 which contained this thing as part of its flavor symmetry with the puncture O prime, uh, such that O lies inside of the closure of O prime. And in um, for those who are familiar with uh, um, uh, nilpotent orbit closures, this is a a craft cortese type uh, minimal degeneration. Um, the change in the vial anomaly coefficients, the Higgs branch dimension, the, the Coulomb branch, et, et cetera, those are all given as above. And the rest of the current algebra, uh, including the levels, is preserved, though again, it may be enhanced in the infrared. This sounds a lot like a process called partial puncture closure, but it's not actually the same. Partial puncture closure is also described by some um, grinfeld sokolov reduction of the vertex operator algebra, but a different grinfeld sokolov reduction. So let me explain the difference. Um, in, in, in this thing, what you do is you start with the full puncture, which is the zero orbit. Uh, you turn on a VEV for the positive root of some SU2 subalgebra of G. And then in the, in the infrared, you get some decoupled Goldstone bosons and their super partners and a class S theory where the full puncture is replaced by the puncture labeled by some other nilpotent, nilpotent orbit O corresponding to this embedding of SU2. Remember there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between SU2 embeddings up to conjugacy and nilpotent orbits. That's the Jacobson Morozov out there. And so what you get in the infrared is some decoupled crap plus the theory with uh, the zero the zero orbit replaced, the full puncture replaced by O. Um, and so those, as I said, are are are, slight, are different Higgsings, um, though they may land you in the same place. Um, so here's a, a picture just to keep in mind. I've 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 picked um, the uh, D5 for no particularly good reason. 
Um, and what I've done is I've taken the diagram of nilpotent orbits and their closures, um, maybe flipped on its head, um, and labeled the edges by the nilpotent Higgsings that, um, that can appear. So at the top of the diagram is the zero orbit or the full puncture. At the bottom of the diagram is the, um, is the, minimal, or, is the minimal orbit or the, sim excuse me, I said it backwards, is the, is the subregular orbit or the simple puncture. Um, and in between you have uh, uh, you know, all of the other orbits and I've labeled solid edges by the uh, factor in the flavor symmetry algebra and its level that you hit, that you you Higgs in order to go from one puncture to the next. Um, there are dashed edges where there are minimal orbit, sorry, where there are no potent orbit closures, um, but the, they're not of this sort of minimal degeneration, and so there's no corresponding nil potent Higgsing <coughs> associated to that edge. But I, I put them in anyways as as dashed lines. And I want to draw your attention to the fact that there are um, uh, uh, orbits marked in red with um, simple factors in their flavor symmetry algebra. Namely, this one has an SU2 at level 16, and this one has an SU2 at level 32, uh, which um, cannot be Higgs in this fashion. Or to be more precise, um, if you were to turn on um, a, a, a VEV for the highest root moment map, it would take you out of SS theory. You might end up on some in very favorable circumstances on some other uh, n equals two infrared fixed point. Um, most of the time you end up on a trivial theory, um, but in any case, it doesn't keep you within the same uh, 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 class S construction, just replacing one puncture with another. It takes you out of this class and maybe lands you on something completely boring. Um, though sometimes, if you're lucky, it lands you on something interesting. So I don't have very good control over where, when you get something interesting. Um, so you know these are not quite the same uh, as what I described on the on the first uh, uh, or second whatever it was slide um, because you can have <coughs> symmetry enhancement. The manifest symmetry uh, is not necessarily equal to the full symmetry of the. Uh, uh, of the uh, of the theory, um, and it, it, when you do um, turning on a highest root moment map for the manifest symmetry is not the same thing as turning on a highest root moment map for some simple factor in the full symmetry algebra. So here's an example, just uh, our, our friend from a few slides ago, a, a particular realization of the E8 rank one minahan nemeshansky theory in the D4 theory. Uh, and rather than having the full E8 symmetry manifest, we just have an SO8 cross SO8 symmetry. These are two full punctures and one simple puncture. Um, and so I have an SO8 cross SO8 as opposed to the full E8. Um, and instead of turning on the highest root moment map of the E8, we, know, we knew what that did. We could turn on a highest root moment map for the SO8. And what you do is you flow to uh, a theory of uh, free hypermultiplets, 24 of them to be exact, um, transforming in this representation of the, the other SO8, the one that was completely unbroken uh, by this procedure. And then in the infrared, there's an SU2 cubed enhancement because it, well, I didn't write it down, but this is the, um, the, the minimal nil potent orbit of D4, which has an SU2 cube uh, of flavor symmetry. And, um, and the, in, in, as a representation of the SO8 cross SU2 cube, the 24 free hypermultiplets transform in this representation. Um, and now you say, well, what about, uh, what about that other um, SO8? Or maybe this uh, SU2 here, can I, can I now uh, do a nilpotent Higgsing of, the, of those guys? And the answer is that's obstructed 
uh, by the chiral ring relation. The B hat one operator here, the moment maps, are no longer independent generators of the chiral ring. They are quadratic expressions in the free hypermultiplets. And so you can't turn on a moment map without turning on the a VEB for the free hypermultiplets as well. That would violate this ring relation. Uh, and so you you can't do what I what I said, namely turn on just the uh, highest root moment map and, and induce an RG flow from that. Instead, what you do is you just move along this quaternionic vector space in some completely boring way. Okay, so what do I hope to get out of this? All of this seemed rather simple. Um, one thing that uh, is a, an invariant that I've been been looking been looking at, I think, on every slide uh, so far is the level of the curved algebra. And let me just remind you that the, uh, take the OPE of two currents in four dimensions. There's a the most singular term is the coefficient of the identity operator. And that coefficient, I can, in some suitable normalization, I can call a K. And there's one such coefficient for every simple factor in the flavor symmetry algebra. Um, and in the example on the previous slide, um, I had an, an SO8 at level 12 cross SO8 at level 12, which was enhanced to E8. And I knew the level of the E8 because I knew the embedding of the two SO8s. Um, and so the E8 was also at level 12. Um, and so um, even though there could be some enhancement, most of the time you can deduce, <coughs> excuse me, most of the enhanced flavor symmetry algebra are once it, knowing only the levels of the manifest flavor symmetry. Um, and so you can, you, you know what the, the uh, levels of the current algebra for the, for the super conformal field theory are. But there are a couple of instances where um, without further information, you actually don't know the answer. Namely, if I have some simple factor F that's enhanced to F cross F, uh, all I know is that the levels K1 and K2 add up to the level of the initial guy, but I don't know them individually. And the other thing that can happen, and it does happen, is that some abelian factor in the flavor symmetry algebra, something for which this level is a little bit ambiguous because there's no subleading term involving the structure constants um, to normalize uh, uh, these currents, I could have that abelian factor enhanced to some non-abelian uh, uh, factor with some level that's hard to deduce. Um, just from the knowledge of the um, uh, manifest flavor symmetry. Um, often you can figure this out using some tricks from S-duality or, or whatever, but uh, sometimes you're not so lucky. And in the, the E6 theory, when we cataloged all of the uh, three punctured spheres in the E6 theory, there were 13 of them uh, which, for which there were some levels that we could not determine. In E7, there were 98 of them out of some 11,000 uh, 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 three punctured spheres. And in the E8 theory, there were 244 of them out of nearly 50,000 uh, uh, three punctured spheres. So I've always wanted to know how to uh, uh, determine these uh, undetermined levels and, and um, sort of complete the. Um, catalog. And um, it turns out that, that um, you can use this nilpotent Higgsing technique uh, uh, to do a lot of that work. So here's a simple example uh, uh, from the E7 theory. Um, you can have one full puncture, the zero orbit. Um, and then um, uh, uh, one other puncture, um, uh, there are two two interesting cases, um, and I'm uh, 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 and I've labeled them uh, uh, here using their Bela Carter labels, um, and then a, a third puncture, which can be any one of these four uh, uh, nilpotent orbits. So there's a total of eight theories where the E7 symmetry of the full puncture 
is enhanced to E7 cross E7. So it's precisely one of those cases that I said was difficult before. Um, uh, uh, we don't know what the value of K is here. It can be anything from, well, can take it to be less than or equal to 18 just by symmetry. But other than that, it seems to be up for grabs. Um, and um, well, uh, uh, one of the things we were able to do was show using a, a unitarity bound that these are all product superconformal field theories. Um, so in fact, the, the, these two E7 factors, the, the theory is actually a product superconformal field theory. And there's an E7 factor in each uh, uh, factor in the product. Um, uh, uh, but again, that, that was not quite enough information. When uh, 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 for two of the eight theories, we were able to identify the other factor in the product and hence determine that um, one of the factors is the uh, rank one minahan nemeshansky theory for E7. Um, which said that the other fact, and so the other factor had uh, level 28, 36 minus eight. Um, but um, we were only able to do it for two out of the eight and, and the rest were mysterious. But now it's, it's, it's essentially a triviality. Um, uh, the, all of these guys are related by no potent Higgsing. I can take T4, there's an SP3 level 12 symmetry that I, if I Higgs it, I, I replace D4 with D4 plus A1, and then you can Higgs in SP211 and replace that with by D5A1 and so on. So all of these guys are related by nilpotent Higgsing. I just told you that nilpotent Higgsing doesn't change the levels of the, the rest of the flavor symmetry algebra. In other words, it's still E7 at level 36 minus K across E7 at level K for each of these factors. Uh, and since we determined that one of them, K was eight, K is eight for all of them. And the missing other missing level is 28. So that was sort of, sort of trivial, but you can use that and, and, and similar observations to pin down these, nearly all of the levels uh, in, in, in these theories, 94 out of 98 uh, 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 unknown levels in E7 and 215 out of 244 in the E8 theory. So that was sort of pleasing to, to me, but maybe um, no one else is really bothered by this. Um, we've updated the uh, online application that you may be familiar with for E7, and we will update the, the online application for E8 um, to reflect um, uh, uh, this new knowledge. So uh, when, not now, but um, in uh, a week or so, you'll be able to go uh, online and see the, the corrected levels for all of these theories. So uh, maybe a, 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 a another, uh, um, uh, a useful application, one that uh, uh, is still a little bit more open-ended uh, is to try to address uh, the following question, um, which I think is a, a, a concern to anyone uh, uh, attending this seminar. Uh, namely, if I present you with two superconformal field theories via some construction or other, some brain construction or class S or whatever, what do you need to know about them in order to decide whether they're isomorphic? And, and I, I phrase the question that way as opposed to the reverse question, because of course, if you, if you um, want to know that they're not isomorphic, all I have to do is tell you one thing that's different about them. Namely, you know, there is an operator in one theory that's absent in the other, or there's some OPE coefficient that's different. I need to give you one piece of data that differs between the theories, and then you know that they're not isomorphic. But um, I could tell you facts about the theories uh, uh, um, all day, um, and um, it, you know, we're things that, about which they agree. Um, but when would you know that I've told you enough uh, uh, that you can confidently go home 
and, and say these two theories are isomorphic. Um, uh, what's a sort of sufficient set of data since the um, complete specification of a quantum field theory is, involves an infinite amount of data. And obviously you don't, uh, you, well, you probably can't calculate an infinite number of things from this brain construction. Um, but if you could, it would take you an infinite amount of time. So, uh, so when is this? When have I told you enough to uh, uh, let you decide that these theories are isomorphic? I think that's a big question. And what this nilpotent Higgsing uh, uh, methodology, as we'll see in a few slides, uh, does is it gives us a way of manufacturing uh, uh, candidate theories um, to test ideas about um, the answer to this question. So I can explain my motivation for this. Of course, I, I, I've been engaged in this foolhardy attempt to catalog a, a, a class of such theories. Um, and uh, one might be interested in knowing when a new entry in that catalog is isomorphic to an existing entry. Um, both so that you can sort of prune your catalog and, and make it non-redundant, but also because whenever you're presented with some theory via some brain construction or whatever, um, having different realizations of the same theory can tell you new, new, more information about that theory than just having one of them. So knowing that I have two different realizations of the same theory lets me say more about it than I would be able to say from just the one. Um, and so it's important for me to know that I'm talking about the same theory. And so I want to know, uh, be able to calculate on the two sides enough about the theory to satisfy myself that I'm really talking about the same theory rather than two different. So there's a set of in invariants that are easy to calculate that I'll kind of call the conventional invariants, uh, which um, I at least had been sort of lulled into uh, uh, complacency uh, and had been using to label uh, the theories. Um, but uh, the spoiler alert, um, these conventional invariants are not sufficient uh, uh, data to label theories uniquely. So what are they? Well, they're the vial anomaly coefficients that we've talked about already. They're the um, uh, current algebra and uh, together with its levels. Um, they're the, the, the generators of the, the Coulomb branch chiral ring. Um, uh, uh, you know, you, you have uh, uh, N of them for some rank N theory and the Scaling dimensions are, are in, in what scaling dimensions occur with what multiplicities is an interesting invariant. The dimension of the Higgs branch, um, I, I say that instead of its Cairo ring because its Cairo ring can be extremely hard to compute. Um, uh, that's maybe the topic of interest to, to lots of people at this seminar, but as you know, there's there's hard work to be done uh, 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 to, to compute that. Um, and so uh, I, I'd like to get by with um, uh, uh, maybe just giving its dimension or something. Um, but this is actually, as it turns out, clearly insufficient uh, a set of data to, um, uh, uh, to label theories uniquely. And here's an example where you can, can see I it failing. So, yeah. Just, so do you know also if with the full car ring, it would also be insufficient? Do you have an example? Uh, oh, well, so that's that's actually a good question. If I knew the full Cairo ring, would, would, that be, would that be sufficient? I'm going to, um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, uh, assume that that, in addition to all of the other data just stated, is sufficient. Um, but uh, I, um, uh, I certainly don't have a proof. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and one of the, the purposes of this talk is, as I said, to, to um, 
Um, you know, you generate examples so we can test these ideas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so that that that's one I'm trying to do. So here I I present to you an example, um, uh, 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 which is not generated by by the technique I'm about to tell you about in in, in a few slides, uh, but is is it clearly illustrates sort of what the what the task ahead is. So here I got I've taken the D6 theory, which we saw uh, uh, a little bit ago. Uh, and I, I've, I've written for you four three punctured spheres uh, with nilpotent orbits, two to the six, two to the six, and one to the 12th. That's the, the, the full puncture. Um, and this is uh, dn for n even. So the, there are v these very even punctures, the uh, partitions where all of the parts are even come in, correspond to two different nilpotent orbits. And so I have two times two or four choices, which I've labeled in red and blue uh, uh, for constructing three punctured spheres. And you could ask of these four theories, are they isomorphic? Are they different? Um, now there's an other automorphism of spin 12, which exchanges the two spinner representations and exchanges the red and blue labels on the nilpotent orbits. So it, uh, uh, it's an isomorphism between this theory and that theory, or between this one and that one. So there are really only two uh, isomorphism classes, uh, mainly labeled by the first two, let's say. Uh, and the question is, are these two guys isomorphic or not? Well, they have the same viral anomaly coefficients. I've written the effective number of hypers and vectors here. Uh, and that's essentially the same thing as giving you A and C. They have the same global symmetry algebra and levels. Uh, there's an SP3 associated to the two, two to the sixth punctures, and they're both at level 12. And there's an SO12 at level 20 associated to the full puncture. And it's there's no enhancement. This is what it is. Uh, the Coulomb branch in both cases is 18 dimensional, and it has two generators in, in with scaling dimension four, six with scaling dimension six, four with scaling dimension eight, and six with scaling dimension ten. The Higgs branch is 66 dimensional in both cases. Um, there are low-lying operators in, in, in these theories that transform identically under the uh, uh, flavor symmetry that I wrote down over here. And yet these are not isomorphic theories. You can see that from the Coulomb branch geometry. Um, the, here I've written down the cyborg witten curve with its 18 parameters. Um, and um, there's a plus or minus sign over here plus sign for the two guy when the, it's two red guys, minus when it's a red and a blue. And I, I maybe I can convince you that these lead to non-isomorphic uh, uh, Coulomb branch geometries. Uh, the Higgs branch chiral ring uh, and it, the generators and relations agree up to delta equals eight, but at delta equals nine, the theory with two red punctures has a B hat nine halves operator in the chiral spinner of spin 12 that's absent in the second theory. Um, this is a kind of, both of these are kind of uh, 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 difficult diagnostics. The Coulomb branch geometries, uh, um, you, you know, you can have the same Coulomb branch arising from very different looking cyborg written curves. And in the conformal limit, different super conformal field theories share the same Coulomb branch geometry, but have different uh, uh, mass deformations. So here's an example in rank one, uh, the E8 minahan nemeshansky theory can be described using this cyborg witten curve or that cyborg witten curve with the same par parameter A, remember it's a rank one theory, um, but the vanishing orders at the points look completely different. Here I have one, two, three, here I have one, one, four, looks completely different. Um, but these are actually the isomorphic uh, um, uh, uh, Coulomb branches. And moreover, um, uh, these, the, the, these gentlemen constructed five other rank one theories with the same 
Coulomb branch geometry in the conformal limit, but different uh, mass deformations. So this is clearly a, a, a not, not useful. And the Higgs branch, well, we saw that the um, uh, 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 spectrum of generators differed at some order, you know, uh, 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 delta equals nine. Um, but I can construct two examples where they differ at arbitrarily high order, the obvious generalization of the thing I wrote down over here, uh, the, uh, uh, where again, I take uh, some D2N theory with two very even punctures and the full puncture. Um, and these, this pair of theories, uh, the Higgs branch chiral ring generators and relations are identical up to some order that grows quadratically with N, but at the next order, there's a, a B hat operator in the chiral spinner, uh, which is present in this theory, but absent in that one. So I can push off the difference uh, between the Higgs branch chiral rings to arbitrarily high order, um, uh, uh, you, you know, in, in this example. And clearly that's, can be generalized and, and, and we're gonna have a hard time unless you can, you know, compute this exactly uh, to tell these uh, uh, theories apart. So, um, so Jacques, one idea, yes. So the, the two theories, these are class S theories of type D and- the, Of type uh, D2N to be really precise. Oh, it's D even, very good, okay. And, uh, right. the, and, and you're saying there is a, just a choice of two spinners uh, which differs between one and another, right? Well, so if you compute the, the, the index, the Schur or Hall-Littlewood index, it agrees up to this order, and then beyond this order, it disagrees. Let's see. Um, and and you, at this order, you'll have some spin representation? That at this order, that this thing has a, a, an operator, a B hat operator in the spinner uh, that's absent in this theory. And then beyond that, of course, the Higgs branch dimensions agree, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, the, if this one has an extra generator at some order, that one has an extra generator at some other order, and the ring relations are different, and so on and so forth, right? But so the in, in, the, in the end, the dimensions of the Higgs branches are the same, but the, the generators and relations are different. But the generators and relations start to differ at some order that, that's quadratic in it. So uh, at uh, n equals two, there is a, is the simplest example or do you have to do Well, that? so I gave you the, uh, I, I gave you a, a, an example from n equals three <coughs> and n equals two, they, they, they differ already in the, um, uh, at b hat one. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can already see it from the flavor symmetry. So I view that as a little bit boring. Um, here I did it for n equals three, and they differed uh, um, uh, uh, at, as I said, it's a, it's something that grows quadratically with n. So, um, so they they differed at 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 order nine, right? Let's see. So, is it? Um, do you also know the? Um... Corresponding uh, dual uh, quiver that uh, one would write down for these properties. Um, it, that's tricky with these very even punctures, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, so that's that's precisely the thing, right? So so you would be tempted to write down the same quiver because the the, the, the you know the partitions are the same, right? But they're not the same theory. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> let me uh, let me generate some more examples for you, so that um, uh, uh, oh well. Before I do that, let me let me say something that's suggested by <coughs> uh, by this example, and and which we were able to verify in a bunch of other examples, is that if you look at some more slightly more subtle uh, invariant, namely not just the Lie algebra of the flavor symmetry, but actually the global form of the flavor symmetry group that we could actually distinguish these theories. You'll notice, as I said, you know, this one has something in the chiral spinner that's absent in this one. So you might expect that the global form of the flavor symmetry 
is slightly different because, and you know, it accounts for the difference in the spectrum of of sure operators in the two theories. Um, uh, 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 that's a good conjecture, and it's actually true in this case that the global form of the flavor symmetry group actually differs between the two theories, and that is enough to tell you um, uh, that they're different. And Laksha, in a very nice paper, wrote a very nice, succinct way to compute this global form. Um, uh, 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 and, and so it gives you a, an efficient way to calculate and determine the fact that these two theories are different. Right? You don't need to actually compute the, the super conformal index out to this ridiculous quadratic you know, order that grows quadratically with n. You can just do a very simple computation uh, and determine that these theories are different. Uh, so that's actually very nice. Uh, so we might say, well, if the global form of the flavor symmetry group agrees, then the theories ought to be isomorphic. So let's try to test that. Um, oh, here I just explained this business about what, how to determine the global form, but uh, not in light of the fact I'm running out of time, let me, let me uh, 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 skip that. Um, uh, I'll just tell, show you that the global form is different in these in these two in these two examples. Um, so I actually wrote it down the so the the global form is something you take the simply connected form of the the uh, um, uh, uh, flavor symmetry group. You take the center of the super conformal supergroup, which is generated by this by this generator over here. Um, and then you quotient by gamma, where gamma is, you know, some finite subgroup of the of the center of this whole thing in the numerator. Um, and you can see that um, for this theory and that theory, they're slightly different um, centers. Um, so, well, you can just compare this entry with that entry, or this entry with that entry, and you see that they're different. Um, and that is sufficient to, to tell you that these are different theories. And in fact, accounts for the difference in the spectrum of Higgs branch generators and relations. So let me now give you a different construction using these nilpotent Higgsings, which lets you study a lot more examples. Um, so say we have a, a class S theory where we have two pairs of punctures which are related by nilpotent Higgsing, uh, where I Higgs with the same flavor symmetry, you know, take turn on the highest root moment map for the same uh, uh, simple Lie algebra at the same level k. Okay, so O1 I Higgs to O2 and O3 I Higgs to O4, where I, I further stipulate that the full flavor symmetry of O1 direct sum O4 is the same as the full flavor symmetry of O2 direct sum O3. And then I can take any third puncture, assuming it's high enough up on the uh, Hasse diagram, and construct a pair of theories where I take O1 plus O4 and O2 plus O3 on, uh, and, and this third guy. Uh, and these two theories by construction have all of the same conventional invariants, the, the, all the invariants I wrote down before are the same. Um, uh, uh, and so now, sorry, go ahead. Question? Okay. So, oh, this is impossible to read. Uh, uh, this is the Hasse diagram <coughs> decorated by Nilpot and Higgsings for E7. I'm gonna choose a bunch of examples from E7 and I'll, I'll maybe show you a better version of this figure later. Um, but here's a, here's a bunch of Higgsings that uh, do precisely that. You probably, it was too small to read on the previous slide, but uh, uh, here's, um, uh, 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 here's one. So you can start with the A3 puncture and Higgs and SU2 level 12. Um, and, and you get this, this guy, A3 plus A1 double prime. And there's a spin seven uh, 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 that was part of the, the, that was the rest of the flavor symmetry over here that becomes the full flavor symmetry over here. Um, and similarly here, uh, 
you can hit, do a nilpotent Higgs and you have an SU2 level 12, preserving SU2 13 plus SU2 24, or here you can preserve an SU2 uh, level eight, and here you're Higgsing everything. Um, uh, and so let pick one row uh, of this of this table and let it be O1 Higgs to O2, and another row and let it be O3 Higgs to O4, and construct an example like this. So here we go. Here's here's a pair. I took the second, uh, I take the, the second row of the table and the last row of the table, and I constructed a, a family of examples where I can choose almost anything I want for the um, third puncture O, uh, starting with the full puncture and then higgsing down until you know <clears throat> the theory becomes bad, and everything looks precisely in accord with uh, uh, the previous um, uh, with the previous conjecture, namely when the global form of the flavor symmetries differ, of course, the, the SCFTs are distinct. So for instance, um, for the full puncture, here's the, the uh, full flavor symmetry is this group cross that Z2 modulo gamma, where gamma is the, uh, the center of this times the center of that uh, for the guy on the left. And it's the product of the centers of the first three factors for the guy on the right. So, so it's a different global form of the flavor symmetry. Um, and it's sure enough, you compute the sure index and they differ. Uh, but you higgs down, higgs down, higgs down. And eventually you hit one of these blue guys where the global form of the flavor symmetry um, uh, uh, is the same for the two theories. And you go ahead and you compute the Schur index and as high as you can uh, make your computer run before smoke starts curling out of it, the, the, the Schur indices agree. So they seem to um, have the same spectrum of, of, of operators in, in short multiplets. And then you Higgs down, Higgs down, Higgs down, and you know the, the global form of the flavor symmetries agree, the Schur indices agree, everything is great. And then you come to this weird case over here where you do this no potent Higgsing and the answers are different, but it, it's exactly what you expect. Um, over here, the manifest flavor symmetry uh, is enhanced and you get associated to this puncture that you're Higgsing, doing a no potent Higgsing of, there's not one SU228, but two SU228s. And the two theories you get in green over here corresponding to Higgsing one or the other of the two SU228s. So you expect to get different theories, and indeed you do. Um, and this whole diagram here is perfectly consistent with the hypothesis that um, the global form of the flavor symmetry is a sufficient diagnostic, and accompanied by all of the rest of the invariants we've been talking about, to distinguish. Uh, 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 these theories. Again, modulo Antoine's question about whether um, uh, 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 computing this, the spectrum of, of sure operators is actually sufficient um, to tell you that the theories are the same. Um, to the extent that we can do that, it seems to agree beautifully with this hypothesis about um, uh, uh, um, the global form of the flavor symmetry. Alas, um, I can choose a different uh, 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 pair of rows from that table and construct a new family of, of, um, of uh, pairs of superconformal field theories related by nilpotent Higgsing. So I can take O to be any one of these uh, uh, 15 guys over here. Um, uh, sorry, I can take O to be much, much bigger, but for these 15 guys, the global form of the flavor symmetry is the same between the two theories. Um, but if you go ahead and you compute the Schur index, uh, the, for 11 of the 15, they're actually different. Uh, and the difference starts <clears throat> uh, due to the presence of a B hat two operator. So 
order tau to the fourth, uh, which is um, uh, present in, in this theory. It's, in the, it's the spinner of the uh, uh, SO7 associated to this puncture that's absent in, 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 in this theory. Um, but to complicate matters, um, uh, uh, of these 15, four have sure indices that do agree. Uh, and just to show you that, that I'm not a complete slacker, I computed the sure indices out to order tau to the 12th. Um, and so you see, uh, 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 you know, this is not, coefficient is nine, almost 20 million. Uh, and, you know, they, they agree. Um, here again, you know, I compute them and, and they agree, seem to agree perfectly. Um, and so it's pretty clear that the global form of the flavor symmetry is not sufficient. We need some other di uh, diagnostic. And I don't really know um, what that diagnostic might be, but I'm hoping that someone in the audience will be uh, uh, clever enough to come up with a, a better diagnostic. So I, mm -hmm. I, I present to you um, the um, data from which you're supposed to uh, extract a hypothesis. Uh, here are all of the choices for the third puncture uh, in, sorry, let me go back, in this family. So the choices for O, right, in this uh, uh, pair of uh, SCFTs. The guys in black, well, there the global form of the flavor symmetry is different. And so they are obviously different theories. You can ignore the bottom of the Hasse diagram. Those are bad theories, and so we can toss those out. But uh, uh, everything else is a perfectly fine uh, n equals two super conformal field theory. And um, the guys in orange are the ones where the global form of the flavor symmetry agrees, but the sure indices are different, so they're definitely different theories. And the four guys in green. Um, which occurs sort of at the bottom of the Hasse diagram, at least the part that's accessible to us, um, uh, are the four guys where the sure indices agree, the global forms of the flavor symmetry are the same. And I strongly believe these are isomorphic um, uh, uh, conformal field theories, um, but I don't see the pattern in, in this data. I don't see, uh, um, you know, what, uh, what, what a more refined diagnostic might look like. Uh, and so I leave you with that puzzle um, uh, uh, and um, stop for questions. All right, then let's uh, thank Shaq. Questions? I, I have a, a question. Uh, thank you mm -hmm. for the very nice talk. Uh, do you have a way of of guessing before doing the computation at which order the short indices will disagree to tell you how much you have to compute before you're sure that they are the same. Because in the previous slide, you showed some computation up to order 12, but do you have a way to know right. that they will not disagree at order 13? Uh, uh, very good. Um, so the, the one thing that you can, so the, the formula for the sure index in, in in class S, also the Hall Littlewood index, so that latter is more, slightly more difficult to actually compute, uh, is written as a sum over irreducible representations of some quantity. Um, and you can ask a very simple thing to compute is at what order does each irreducible representation uh, uh, first contribute to the index? Mm -hmm. um, and what, if you go back to, um, uh, uh, I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit, uh, uh, um, where is, where is our example? Um, let's just go here. Order 10. Yeah, so. so I was a little bit coy over here. Uh, uh, about this, uh, about this uh, 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 family of examples, where indeed the difference occurs at um, some order that grows quadratically with n. But what also grows quadratically with n is the order at which the chiral spinner representations first contribute to the index. 
And what I told you was that this theory has a, 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 a B hat operator transforming in the chiral spinner. And it precisely appears at the order at which the chiral spinner first contributes to the index. The, the lowest order contribution is in fact uh, at something that transforms in the chiral spinner. And you can convince yourself it's a, it's a Higgs branch uh, 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 gener chiral ring generator in the, in, the spinner, in the chiral spinner representation of, of spin 4n. And, and, and so what you can do is you can ask at what order do the chiral spinner representations first contribute? Um, and the answer differs between this theory and this theory. Hmm. Um, and so I, I guess uh, in the case of these green uh, E7 theories that you showed at the end, you've been as high as this. Uh, I've, I've calculated e out to an order where every uh, uh, basic representation has contributed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and well beyond that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, so at least I've probed every basic representation. Of course, I haven't probed every representation. And that's an infinite computation. Um, but all of the ones where the Dinkin in indices are either, are, there's just one one and, and the rest are zeros. Um, uh, uh, I've probed all of those guys. Right, so I precisely, you know, we capture this phenomenon. Sorry, so, I interrupted someone. No, no, all, all good, all good. Um, so uh, you, you are just so I get the picture when you do these when you do these uh, flows or your Hasse diagrams, mm -hmm. uh, these are really associated to a single puncture in some class S construction. Is this correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. So in, in principle, you would have now some Hasse diagram, well, also for the other punctures, so some mega structure. That's right. Are these in any way nice or? Oh, well, I mean, it's obviously they're pretty complicated to draw. Right? Yeah, 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 but, yeah, but this gives you a very nice, you know, web of RG flows mm -hmm. among class S theories, right? Because for every yeah. puncture, right? I, I have, uh, you know, the possibility of turning on uh, a, a highest root moment map for some subalgebra of its flavor symmetry and flowing to the to the next guy in the oh. uh, diagram, and I can do that for for each of the punctures. So just to go back to uh, um, where was E seven? There we go. So there there is E seven, right? Um, yeah. And here's the so you know every solid edge in this diagram uh, in, in I mean. If I had other punctures, I, I wouldn't have to lop off the bottom of this picture. Every edge in this diagram is, is a null potent Higgsing that I could do replacing that one puncture with another guy, right? And so I have this whole, and in principle, I have, you know, for each puncture in the theory, I can do this not just for three punctured spheres, I can do this for any theory. Um, and I have a flow uh, uh, between different theories induced by, uh, a nil potent Higgsing on on for each of the punctures, right? So it's a very nice web of theories, um, and because this thing preserves the levels of the rest of the flavor symmetry, uh, you get a, a bunch of information uh, about the, the other entries in this web uh, of theories um, from doing this particular RG flow. Okay, very good. Do you have more questions? I actually had a very basic maybe question about almost the first slide when you showed the the e the en the el theories. You, uh -huh. Basically, you you do this um, this nilpotent Higgsing, so you destroy mm -hmm. this en this exceptional flavor, and then it right. kind of reemerges by this enhancement from the su two of the free part. Correct. Weird. So uh, I don't know, how do you explain this? That this is the SU2 of the free part that enhances to the exceptional and then- Well, let me put it this way. The same thing happens even in simpler cases. So let's do the simpler case 
uh, whoops, where, where, where did I? Uh, well, uh, maybe this is simpler, right? So here we, we went um, uh, 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 from spin 10, for, from well, it's called SO6 to, to uh, from SO10 to, uh, to, to SU2 cross SO6, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I did that, it, 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 but that the flavor symmetry of the puncture I Higgs two, I, I, I'm treating as an infrared enhancement, right? So even though I, I, I you know, only partially broke the SO10, right? The, the SO6, you know, mm -hmm. is, uh, um, uh, in fact, in this way of realizing that flow, um, I break the entire SO10 and most of it comes back. Okay, okay. So in, it's your way of, of saying it that you completely break and then it re-enhances and it goes. Uh, that's right. Numbers. Yeah. Uh, um, it, 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 it's, it, uh, I admit that's a clumsy way to think about it, but what this tells you is that the levels of these guys are unrelated a priori to the level of the thing that I Higgs, right? I um, uh, 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 whereas the levels of everything else are completely unaffected. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay? So, so, that's, so that's the point, right? Is, is the, uh, are the levels of the, the things that appear in the infrared theory, which of those are de strictly determined from the levels of the, of the UV theory and which of them are sort of up for grabs, right? So what I'm telling you in this example is that the, the level of the, uh, the E6, E7, or E8 um, in the infrared theory is unrelated to the level of the E6, E7, or E8 in the UV, because I got rid of that entire symmetry via this uh, uh, no potent Higgsing. Instead, what it's related to is the level of the SU2 that enhanced to E6, E7, or E8. Yes, okay. And, 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 what's, and what it does, at least for me, and maybe not for you, is explain this weird level here, right? Which I never you know, really uh, 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 understood why it's that and not some other expression. But the reason why it's that is precisely that's the one that, that is compatible with this enhancement. Okay. And so you could work backwards. In fact, if you if you say that the infrared theory has this flavor symmetry at these levels, right, and this factor has to come from enhancing this SU two, so that then the formula for the level of the SU two must be, must have this functional dependence on n in order to make that compatible. Okay. Thank you. Maybe there's some better way to see that. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 but but this is this is the this is the best explanation I've I've been able to come up with for for why this level is what it is. Um, yeah, it's good. It makes sense. It's just surprising that it comes from this free from this free part. But indeed, in general, it, it even comes from nothing. So, right. Yeah. But there, there is actually um, a point. Um, when we make a computation at such quivers, we have to pick a magnetic lattice or very carefully mm -hmm. either it's a lattice of SO or spin. Um, I don't know if you have such a choices to make. So that's one question. And uh, I'm not aware of having made such a choice, but uh, maybe I have secretly. So one possibility is mm -hmm. that the two differences that you get, the two the, a, a, a stem from a choice of um, two choices of uh, of uh, a lattice, right? So two choices which differ by a z two. Hmm. Now. So yeah. Well, but what I mean, what I did later on, right, was give you a a, a um. A, um, 
a, 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 a wide variety, a, a construction of a large class of theories, uh, um, which, whose, you know, which look very different, but whose conventional invariants, you know, end up being all the same, right? You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have been able to guess that these were this, had this, uh, you know, all the same conventional invariants, would you? I see. <coughs> Right, but yeah, I've, I, I, I've, I've arranged for that to be the case. Right? Yeah. All, all I did was I took, I, I took you know, this table, I picked two rows, any two, any pair of rows would do, uh, and, and I you know picked pick the third puncture arbitrarily, and, and I got a, a pair of theories whose conventional invariants all agree. Right, you can, I, I did this in in E seven just because. Uh, uh, Grant was doing a lot of computations in E7, and, and so it was, uh, you know, he had he, he had everything at his fingertips. But we could do this in any theory, right? So in any theory, the the, the story was you pick uh, uh, two pairs of punctures which you know differ by nilpotent Higgsing by the same flavor symmetry at the same level, and you and you put in the proviso that. The flavor symmetry, you know, one plus four is the same as two plus three, and that gives you a pair of theories. I see. Right, and you could do this in the classical, uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, class S theories of, of classical type or exceptional type, doesn't matter, it's the same construction. And this gives you lots of examples, lots and lots of examples. Yeah, so there, there is an additional uh, test that we, we apply once in a while, and, and this is to mm -hmm. um, compute the residue of the pole at uh, the, the parameter we call T or tau, when mm -hmm. it's equal to one. So you have two. So you need. Mm -hmm. you, you have two series, two Taylor series. Right. But even with the tail of series, you could try to evaluate, to, to get an approximation of the uh, residue. At, uh, so don't you need to extrapolate to, to you know, get, at least have some asymptotic behavior of the series in order to extrapolate to tau equals one? Yeah, some, something, something like that. Uh, I, I think Mathematica has um, some uh, the approximation uh, Mm -hmm. You're pretty good there. Uh, so that would be real. That would be really interesting. I should say, um, uh, I'm going to be in London in a couple of weeks. Cool. <laughs> well, the, uh, we have them in Kajima on 22. So uh, maybe in, in, in Cup. I don't know. When are you coming? Uh, so uh, I, to, to explain, uh, uh, my, my daughter, uh, uh, who, uh, as you may know, lives in London, is having her, her, long, her long delayed wedding ceremony. Um, they, they actually got legally married in, in uh, you won't be surprised, March of 2020. Um, <laughs> okay. Maybe we can stop the recording. Um, yeah. Uh, so anyways, I, I, I will be in, in London and... and um, uh, 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 I was hoping to stop by um, Imperial, so maybe um, we can uh, we can we can chat in in, in person at, uh, uh, sometime during our yeah. our uh, our visit there. So, which one of them pushed for? Before we, before we wait, wait, before we sort this out, are there any more questions for Jacques while we're still recording? Indeed, yeah, sorry. I... <laughs> No, all good, all good. But maybe if there are no urgent questions, we can just thank him again. Officially, <laughs> I will stop the recording.